You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block. With your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again for a little program we like to call around here. The old OB, a.k.a. the option block, a.k.a. your bi-weekly source for all things options related. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsider.com, as well as from the ever-evolving Options Insider Radio Network. Got those new cool Pro and Plus servers up and running this week, so our Pro and Plus members get to join us. If you want it in your ear holes instantaneously, that's the way to go there. They can join us live. Throughout all these shows that we do here throughout the week, the plus folks, excuse me, the pro folks actually can go on, be above and beyond, get the chat, get the Q&A session, and of course, get Options Oddities coming back for episode dose here tomorrow. So a lot of great stuff. You know where to go to figure out more about all that. Learn, ask questions, theoptionsinsider.com slash plus and slash pro. If you like hanging out, listen to it on demand on the podcast, have at it. That all is the same as it ever was, so you folks don't have to change your schedule at all. But if you like it a little bit more, you like to engage with stuff a little bit more, like to get it a little bit faster, don't like to wait for on-demand, and like to have exclusive shows, theoptionsider.com slash plus or slash pro is the way to go. And let's see where we're going today. Let's first go out to a sleepy, nay, a tranquil hamlet, where we are joined once again by Uncle Mike Tussaw from the appropriately named St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the program today, sir. This is the day. I'm very excited, as always, and uh, a lot of options to block today. This is the day? What are we doing today? What's different about today? Today's the best day ever. I mean, well, it, could it be? Let me think. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to wait until I analyze the markets to say why today's the day. Okay, we'll, we'll all wait with bated breath as we swing our gaze now farther ETH, ETH, easy for me to say, Far, I'm thinking too much about crypto, I got crypto on the brain, ETH on the brain, farther east and a little bit north to the foreboding compound there on the shores of Maine, waves crashing against the shore, lightning thundering down from the heavens where we are joined once again. By the rock lobster himself. There's one solitary tower lording above all of that in the fog and in the haze. And there's a single light shining from that window. And that is where we are joined right now <laughs> by the rock lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the program. I hear you were a special guest at your own Option Pit event today. Uh, you know, it's funny. Yes, I was a special guest to my own Option Pit event. Um, Quite uh, quite a nice event, actually, I have to say, uh, on some uh, 
some developments in the gold market and the, the Chinese and the Russians get together, uh, trying to maybe give the dollar a little, little kick in the kneecaps, being the world's reserve currency. So we'll see, we'll see how all that plays out in the days and weeks to come. But the event went well, so uh, I was happy. And let's see if we're going to be happy as we head right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show. We break down exactly that. What the heck is trading? What is going on? What is lighting up our collective tapes on this Thursday? Pretty green Thursday kicking off the show here. Most of the major indices feeling their oats Yet again here, S&P, once again, the Goldilocks up about six-tenths of a percent. The Dow up a little bit shy of half a percent. And the NASDAQ leading the charge, once again, up about almost three-quarters of a percent to the upside. That means all of our friends in the vol space taking a little bit of a break here today. Not a ton. VIX Cash kicking off the show is at about exactly 16 and a half. That puts it down about a quarter of a point from where we were this time on Monday. VVIX, the vol of vol, actually ticking up. It was at about a 110 on Monday, 117 and a half coming into the start of the show today. VXX, a product that loves to do naught but go down these days, was at a 32, about 32.20 coming into show. It's about 32.10 now. Puts it down about 1.1, 1.2 points from where it was this time on Monday. And good old vol Q also feeling a little bit of downside today. Vol Q was at about a 17 and a quarter when we kicked off the show. It's down about a point. Actually got a 16 handle now, about 16 and three quarters. I don't think we've, I don't know if we've ever seen a 16 handle in Vol Q. So that's interesting to watch out there as well. Speaking of things to watch, we've been joking and watching all of us these days, all the meme madness. And remember back when GameStop kicked off, we were all saying to ourselves, man, why don't they, why don't they dump some stock? It seems to be the smart play for a failing business. Well, the AMC folks, they're not messing around. This company, of course, has issued some shares. And now looking reports out here from the stock insiders, they're not messing around either. Seven insiders have sold quite a bit of stock since May 28th. <laughs> Wide range of prices, too. Everywhere from 27 and a half. That guy's probably like, oh, I missed it. To the 62 and two thirds. That guy's like, yes, score. <laughs> uh, actually, a total... Of nine insiders, if you add out all the way to the quarter, have sold this quarter and three more in the first quarter out there. So that compares to nobody last year, which, again, AMC was languishing, and just three in the three years prior to that. So <laughs> people are getting the heck out of Dodge on AMC stock. Worth noting the CEO hasn't sold it. I guess he wants to sell and set an example, even though it's, he's got to be pretty tempted at these just absurd prices. That the meme kids are handing them. So, hey, you know, we've said it before. We'll say it again. If they're going to hand you a small fortune, or in this case, maybe a large fortune, that could A, save your company and also be a nice profit to yourself for no other reason than they think it should be up there. <laughs> You're a fool if you don't take it. So it seems like a lot of insiders on the AMC board and everything else have decided to not be fools and take that money while the get while the getting is good. As they say. And since he teased us so dramatically at the start of the show, let's go back around the horn. Let's start with the uncle of Mike's. Uncle Mike, sir, tell us, why is today the day? Never before in the history of the entire stock market has there ever been a better chance to sell than today. Uh, we have new all-time highs today, so it's a very exciting day, as it always is, on uh, days when the S&P gets to new all-time highs. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. And so well, the other thing that I'm excited about is that for uh, in the trading block segment that I'm doing today, I get to announce a new all-time high. And I'm also going to quote uh, the Viceroy here in a second and illustrate a point that uh, is uh, very true that literally happened to me yesterday. And I'm uh, reaping the rewards today. So the Viceroy said very frequently, you can be right on price and wrong on volatility, and still lose money. You can be wrong on price, and right on volatility, and still make money. And that's very true, because there's six factors of option pricing, of course. And 
whether you want to admit it or not, if you trade options, you do trade volatility. The only way you don't is if you sell a call and let and just hold it to, or, or buy, buy an option or sell an option, just hold it till expiration no matter what, then volatility doesn't affect you. But it does affect you somewhat during the trade. But the only way to not deal with it is if uh, you just hold something till expiration and you have the maintenance to do it. Uh, other than that, I don't know of any other way to where volatility will have absolutely zero effect on a trade. I know Andrew probably has something. Well, if you do a six-legged four or whatever, but uh, for the most part, volatility is a big deal. And a trade that I made uh, going into yesterday, I was in a single leg call option. I can't give you the months and the dates and things like that, but I was in a single leg call option. Now, it didn't start out as a single leg call option. It started off as a, um, a butterfly combined with a couple other things. But basically, I bought to close a lot of the garbage on it when the, uh, the short legs on it when... Um, Time decay did its thing and vol came down a little bit. So yesterday I'm looking at this and it just got to the point to where I am like, unless we're going to get an 80 point rally in the S and P or something like that, this is this is just it's not worth holding on to at this point. And so I got out of it and I got out of it and I got into a butterfly for a time frame further out. And so with that, in doing so, here's where the Viceroy quote comes into play. Yes, we had a rally yesterday. Uh, we rallied, uh, we we're having a rally today. And uh, yesterday we were about flat. I got out, I think, when the market was up two points, I think, in the S&P. So for the most part, it's safe to say we were fairly flat on the day. Uh, but with that, I got out of the call and got into another uh, butterfly. And so by doing that, I reduced my deltas by a lot. Um, and so, which I knew I was doing, which I had no problem with it because the deltas were getting a little bit, getting a little bit uh, more than my comfort level on the long call I had. And so I reduced the deltas by a sig pretty significant amount. And so you would think, oh, well, by reducing the deltas, if we have a rally today, you must be kicking yourself. No, I'm not kicking myself. I'm smiling. Because I'm looking at that single leg option, and the single leg option is literally down in value from the point with which I sold it yesterday, roughly 20 points ago. Now, why could that be? Well, there's two reasons for it. Of course, time decay is going to play a factor in it because every day uh, an option has time decay, but volatility is the issue with this one. Uh, with the VIX down 8% on the day to day, uh, volatility got sucked out of it. And so I'm profitable uh, by a pretty nice amount on the butterfly today uh, because also volatility is coming down and then the body of the butterfly is not hurting that badly and the wings are very profitable. And I'm looking at this and I would be a losing trader had I stayed in that long call option today with a lot more deltas. Um, but I am actually a winning trader today win the butterfly with much fewer deltas because of the fact that volatility uh, has come down like it has. So the moral to the story is that you need to get with people like the option pit to teach you stuff about how volatility really does play a big factor in your trading. Now, of course, with the announcement uh, before the markets today, I think that definitely was a big market mover uh, as well. Uh, we had that. Um, also, the meme stocks are always a, um, a market mover, it seems, these days. Um, Bitcoin's relatively quiet on the day-to-day. -day. Uh, and then bonds have been rallying a little bit over the course of the last couple of weeks. So we are getting a little bit of a rally in the 10-year. Uh, but overall, I believe today the main thing that is driving this market is just the announcement before, uh, roughly an hour before the markets were open today. And uh, that's what I am seeing today uh, on a Thursday. All right. I'm surprised you were able to contain yourself that long to make your traditional proclamation of the all-time highs in the markets. Let's now go out to the land of the Rock Lobster, where he is exhausted from being a special guest on his own program. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, what is lighting up your tape out there in this day of yet another all-time high, sir? Um, well... Um, I, I, I knew that Mr. Tucson was going to say that, so I could not steal his thunder in all good conscience um, because, you know, when it comes down to it, he and I really try to just hang together on this show, uh, basically against the overlord. So all the umbrage has to be 
basically upstream and downstream. You know, I can't, I can't, I can't diss my own cohort when the umbrage usually flows from the top. I laugh from at your brand, alliance. From the it, eye of Sauron it can't stand against us. me, sir. Your alliance will crumble. <laughs> so um, what I would say, though, is uh, Mr. Tussaw rightly said we are at an all-time high. Why is why are we at an all-time high? And uh, VIX options for next week are at a ten ball, and VIX is still um, still sixteen. Um, I find that odd. It's again, it's it is. I think we're still in the COVID era. It still makes people feel unhappy. Um, uh, it's there, like a lot of uncertainty there. We got like a uh, supply chain and this chain and, you know, and there's no, there's no steel for cars and there's no chips and, uh, you know, just, um, uh, apparently equities don't care. <laughs> and especially, I don't think equities care when you pump this much, uh, money when this much money is sloshing around. So, uh, we we are seeing, I would say, today could be the low closing tick in VIX. It is possible. We do have low prices for VXX and UVXY. Um, so those are at the low price for the COVID cycle. Um, and because uh, remember, we did do the reverse splits on both of those. So if so, if you think about it that way, um, we are at a place there. Um, the thing that I, again, a little touchy for me is um, uh, Volavol still really hasn't come off a ton. Um, it's it's a little cheaper than it was yesterday. Uh, I think the meme stocks do play a part in all this. Uh, the Vol and the meme stocks are getting smeared. I have a rocket position. I thought we'd see a little bit more action. Just, oh, just smeared. Uh, volatility is smeared huge um, in there. Actually looks like a pretty decent purchase, but I didn't purchase so much of it yesterday. Um, but, you know, you are you are seeing vol come down, seeing, but you're not seeing that VIX volatility, let's say in the July cycle. Um, it's lower today, um, but VIX is still well over 100, I believe. Uh, and... Yeah, the one seventeen sixteen. So there's for as, as expensive as SPX is, and there is the correlation is going the right way today. Absolutely, vol is coming off. Um, but I'd be happier if it was lower, but it's not. So it's again, it's one of this. I let's just call it that COVID rally. Uh, with it's always got to be a little like a little in. Eh. You know, it just can't be woohoo. We're rallying. It's got to be. Rally plus vol. Uh, and I think one of the reasons too is uh, a lot of funds and things like that. They're just not selling their puts. I think you know it's more like we're going to roll our puts up, but we're not going to sell them. <laughs> instead of. So I mean, for the liquidity provider, it's easier because then they're you know creating spreads and stuff like that. But um, in the as far as uh, as far as that goes, you just there's nobody is still coming in, and I'll make it easy. Nobody is coming in and selling the 4,000 or the 3,500 puts with impunity in the SPX. It just is not happening yet. Um, and when they do, that's when we'll see VIX start seeing, we'll start seeing new lowers. But nobody is coming in and bashing that downside yet. So for all those that are watching, um, I think that, you know, that would be more of a, you know, at least a better signal that we keep going higher. But for right now, it's not happening. So I'm kind of. And I'm I am happy today, uh, but you also uh, I would I would expect VIX to be at least two points lower with the kind of uh, with the level that we are in SPX, but it's not, and it's not because nobody is selling puts like crazy anymore. Well, let's see what they are doing out there. Let's run around the horn. Let's start with the big indices out here. Let's start in VIX land. VIX actually doing some paper today. That ADV has ticked up at 608,000 contracts. Now it's up a little bit even from Monday. So it's managing to maintain its level above 600K. And it seems like today's on pace to maybe hit that again. 329,000 contracts on the tape as of a few minutes ago. So a decently active day 
out there in Vixland. Spy, similar deal, actually more than half of its ADV, exactly two and a half million contracts on the tape. The ADV is about exactly four million out there, so looking pretty robust in Spy land. The S back up to the levels we expect this time of day, 724,000. It's been around 500, 600,000 last few shows. The ADV, one and a quarter million out there. The Q is also pretty much at exactly one million contracts. The ADV, one and a quarter million. So, yeah, I think it's going to hit that by the end of the day. Russell, IWM, 503,000 contracts. The ADV out there, 549. So, IWM. Looking pretty active out there today. Off, only about off about a third of a percent today, but there's a lot of action going on out there. So if you like all things small cap, stay tuned. Twifo coming up in a little over an hour here on the network, and you folks can get your fill of small cap volatility. Recon is coming up. That tends to drive a lot of action out in small cap land. So if you maybe were interested in small caps and you shipped it away, it might be a time to shift back and pay attention. Yeah, it's coming up in an hour here if you're listening live. If you're listening after the fact, just hit next on your device of choice. Should be ready and waiting there for you after you finish the old OB, that is. Uh, going out to the most actives now, the single name. This, to me, has been where the most fascinating action has been hanging out in the markets of late. And yet again today, just the the amount of variation we're seeing out here in the top 10 most active names the amount of new names that are breaking in and doing so with gusto toppling the former titans of Apple and Tesla out there. It's interesting slash impressive slash terrifying slash insert your adjective of choice. They all pretty much apply out here. Cost you 259,000 contracts to break into the top 10 right now. That's pretty robust. And that gets you to our old friend Palantir. Palantir, you know, is usually these days hanging out around three or four today. It's barely fighting its way into the top 10, 259,000 contracts. Number nine, a name you may have heard of, a former sleepy video game retailer, <laughs> now turned champion of the meme stocks. Yes, it's game, 289,000 contracts for number nine. Do they even sell video games anymore? They just sell stock. I don't know, but either way, they're doing a lot better at one, I think, than the other right now. Number eight. Is this one a meme? I've been asking this for a while. I think the evidence is starting to point to yes, even though it has been coming off a little bit of late. It's Ford. Good for 309,000 contracts. Was threatening the 15 handle coming into the start of the show. Let's see where Ford is hanging out right now. Yeah, about 15 and a third or so. So it's off a little bit on the day. But yeah, a little bit lower. So all of our friends who are piling into 18, 19, 20 calls in June maybe have a little bit of a sad face right now. Number seven, a name we haven't seen in the top 10 in a little while. This is Amazon. Amazon, good for 317,000 contracts in number seven. Amazon, feeling this oats today, up about one, almost one and a half percent out there, right on 3326 or so. Number six, (laughs) it's the name everyone's got on their lips. You know, if you don't like the names that are trading today and that are hot and driving action, just wait a few minutes or a few hours. You'll get some new ones. Clover Health is the latest addition to the meme madness. Ticker symbol Clove, of course. Number six, 336,000 contracts. I think its first appearance was on the Monday program, and now it's, at least for this week, going to be one of the mainstays, one of the stalwarts. Number five, another newcomer. I kind of wonder in all this meme madness, you'll see some of the other names I talk about here in a little bit, how much of this is just simple confusion? People type in, start typing one thing into their broker and they see something else. Like, hmm, how about this one? Because we have Clove, number six. Number five is CLF, Cleveland Cliffs. <laughs> they start typing one thing into their browser. Like, Wait a minute, how about this CLF? This is a mining conglomerate, I do believe, out there. They've been trying to, yeah, they're a mining mining conglomerate. They They have some of the hallmarks of your typical squeeze name. They are shorted and they do have some heavily levered business models going on out there so that does does make them a little attractive to the wall street bets crowd and it's good enough for 347,000 contracts today and the number five spot on our top 10 number four going back to well i won't reveal one of our other big names out here but you can guess from this one what is close to Uh, because amd is back in the top 10 haven't seen them in a while but amd is back number four 356,000 contracts. Yes, it's Symbol Twin, or very close to it, is also here in the top five. Number three, it's Tesla, 690,000 contracts. Number two, yep, number two, 
It's the former big dog, Apple, 821,000. If this keeps up, though, it may have to cede its crown to the new big dog, at least for this week. It's AMC. So, again, the symbol confusion. They, people looking for AMC, they get AMD. They're like, ah, oh, this is kind of good, too. I'm going to get this one. There's got to be a little bit of that, a little bit, a little bit of missing out, hitting the wrong button there in your browser because there's so many very similar symbols lighting it up out there today. But number one, AMC, 1. 1.2 million contracts good for number one that's apple numbers and again you can see it in apple and tesla not quite at the volume levels that they usually are around this time even though apple looking a little bit better than it has of late it's been hitting 600k some days of late so it managed to make it up to number two but can't quite topple the insider stock dumping machine that is amc (laughs) let's look really quickly see how how our top 10 is stacking up from a biased perspective Looks like our top most biased paper, this is kind of interesting actually, is a bit of a tie between Cleveland Cliffs and Palantir, both of them at 78% on the call side of the ledger, but Apple right behind both of them with 77% of their paper. So 77% of that 821,000 contracts coming on the call side. Let's see what's up in Apple today. Up about almost three quarters of a point, or should they off about three, three quarters of a point. Right around 126 and a half, a little bit less. So not a lot of upside action out in Apple today, but a lot of call action in Apple, which is kind of intriguing. Speaking of Apple and tech names, looking at some numbers here coming out of, I believe this is uh, the journal talking at tech fund outflows in May. They were the worst ever. So the highest they've seen the worst ever pretty much since 2018. So Uh, Interesting stuff out there. So 2018, they had about 2.1 billion worth of tech fund outflows. In May of uh, this year, it was about 1.1 billion. So not quite at those levels, but still, it's been a little while since people have been ducking and dumping tech en masse, and they were doing that here in May. Kind of hard to blame them. Tech got hit pretty aggressively during that period, but interesting nugget there nonetheless. Speaking of nuggets of data, we've got the latest ORATS reports here, hot off the presses right before showtime. Listeners, you guys can get at them over there, theoptionsinsider.com slash click on that options news and articles tab, top right corner of the homepage, and you're off to the races. If you did that, you'd see we had reports here from Monday, Marvell Stitch Fix on Monday, everyone's favorite Stitch Fix. Uh, then we had Wednesday, we had Vera Bradley, Campbell Soup, and some name you may have heard of called GameStop. Never heard of it really myself. Thursday, Chewy and Dave and Buster's. A lot of names popping off still this week. So if you like to play in the earnings front, got some got some names for you, including a move report. We had Restoration Hardware popping off after the bell last night. Ticker symbol RH, of course. They went into their announcement at $611.33. Seems like lofty stock prices are just de rigueur out there these days. Everyone's got to have them. And you'd think, given what we saw with the performance of Apple and Tesla post-split, people would be thinking twice about splitting again. But apparently, Restoration Hardware likes to trade at a 611 level out there. And they were pricing in 7.4%. Get this, listeners. A little bit of a bucking of the trend. They delivered, coming into this report at least, nearly 15%. So more than 2x the vol that they were pricing in out there right now. So apparently, times are good in Restoration Hardware because people need fancy expensive furniture to furnish all those expensive houses that they're buying out. They have the stocks up 14 and a half percent right now, 88, almost 89 handles to about almost 702. So that's quite the move and quite the outperformance. So, Hey, there you go. One name bucking the trend out there because the rest of the season, we have the updated earnings season report. It ain't looking much better. Listeners It's at about a 74% right now, average for the season. The This past week right now, 62%, so a pretty blood-red week. The week before that, looking all right, 96%. That's probably the best week of the season so far. Week before that, 81%. And the week before that, 65 And then 54% the week before that. Then we kicked things off with 78%. So that seemed a little bit rosier. Maybe that's why Matt was so keen to make that call early on in the season. But this was the one. This was the one where we were going to see the warm turn. Spoiler alert, it has not been. <laughs> so 74% is the average a little bit higher than we've seen in previous seasons, but still by no means any sort of vol out performance. If you bought a basket of vol, you got back 74 cents on the dollar out there. When will that worm turn? Who knows listeners? Maybe it'll be coming next week when we have actually, these are popping off after the bell today. We have Dave and Buster's after the bell today. They're at 4581. They were pricing in 
Three sixty-five in the past, they've moved three and a quarter. So pricing in a little bit of extra juice in Dave and Buster's. Is that wise? If past is prologue, the answer is a resounding no. But we'll see. <laughs> and then Oracle here, they're on the next week. They're on the fifteenth. Eighty-four and a half. They were pricing in three and a half bucks in the past. They've moved four seventeen. I would probably be more comfortable wagering on that one coming to pass than the Dave and Buster's. But we shall see, listeners. That's why we do the dance here. And speaking of dancing, it's time to dance and it's time to unleash the Eye of Sauron because it is time for the Odd Block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for the Odd Block. everybody let's do it let's unleash the eye of sauron see what it has fixed its gaze upon today it looks like we got some newcomers coming up sometimes when when we run it right before the segment so it's kind of hot off the presses here as well i have no idea what we're going to (laughs) find let's find out together shall we all right first off this is the one we haven't i don't think we talked about this one before on the show before so probably a newcomer this is invesco mortgage capital inc Ticker symbol IVR. Trading right now about four and a quarter. Oh, this is looking ugly today. That's us off one and 11, about 20 and a half percent over the course of the past year. Today, it's up about three and a third percent. So decent day, rough year here for Invesco. Let's look at that year. A year ago, it was trading $5.40. So that's probably why <laughs> it was looking pretty rough. Remember, we are coming off the heels here. This is June 10th. So a year ago on June 8th was kind of the apex of the market for a lot of the mid-tier names all of them kind of rallied into june 8th and kind of sold off again for the better part of the rest of the year so all the names are going to be profiling right now probably had their higher levels for the year right around now so they're going to look bad in comparison from this this frame of reference looking back exactly a year ago to now so they were at oh six oh five and then they kind of gave up the ghost pretty markedly it sold off to 313 by july 7th so in a month, they got cut in half. So rough time for Invesco Morgan. Everyone forgets about that. Everyone you know, talks about the sell-off in March and the big pop we had afterwards. But a lot of names came off again after that, outside of your crazy tech names and your fang names. And it was kind of a rough latter portion of the year. This name kind of languished, got all the way down to about two and a half bucks, looks like, in the, the Nader in September. Hung out at that level all the way through till about mid-November when it finally broke three bucks again. So this thing got aggressively clipped and took a while to recover by let's see by january is trading 333 so still roughly half of that high that it was at so back in june and then it gapped up again in january up to four and a quarter pretty much where it is right now then it's kind of done that dance a few times gapping up to four and change down to three and change and then last week it was trading 335 and then it turned right around to where it is right now up four and a quarter so a good week out here in Invesco Mortgage Capital. Are the meme kids on this one? Who knows? It's cheap enough. So that certainly could be the be one of the catalysts for interest out here. Let's see what our Eye of Sauron found out here, listeners. It was looking a little bit longer term here. Going out to Jan, the Jan $3 puts. So a little bit out of the money now, but a day ago, they were pretty close to at the money puts. And they're going up for 30 cents. So pretty much right off the bid. They were 29 cent bid. These went up for 30 cents. They were offered at 37. So a decently tight market, given the fact that this is a name that doesn't do a lot of paper. And also they were kind of small dollar puts. So I guess it makes some sense from that with from a cheap stock perspective. By the way, the stock was 430 when these went up. And I know you love your vol level. Let's see if I can find that for you. Here it is. 64 and a half vol. That's a pretty juicy vol. For a four and a quarter dollar stock, but it did just gap about 25% in the last day and change. <laughs> so maybe hard to argue it's not warranted. Mr. Rock Lobster, I think you're going to like this one because this looks like your favorite style of trade in here. The old line in the sand puts selling about 5,000 of these bad boys pretty much right on the bid, getting a 60, roughly 65 vol and getting 30 cents. So not quite 10%, but and it's a longer term than maybe you usually like. It's all the way out to Jan, but. What are your thoughts on drawing a fairly aggressive line in the sand? I mean, it did break it. It got down to two and a half bucks 
over the course of the past year. So it can blow through that, but this guy's good to about 270. What are, you, what are your thoughts on this latest addition to the line in the sand cannon, sir? You know, you go out this long and they're basically buying the stock, right? So they're like, okay, you're selling that put. Uh, you're looking for a 10% return. Uh, for half a year, which is kind of what they're doing. And I mean, that's, uh, that's what, so they don't think they're going to get better than a 10% return owning the stock. And they're pretty happy with that use of capital. So, um, you know, I, I think if you're uh, like a, a yield person and you, you know, it's, it's kind of like a bond. I mean, you are, you have equity exposure hundred percent, but you know, it's, uh, it doesn't look like this company's going anywhere. Um, and that's, so it's, again, it's, it's a, for, uh, again, it's, it's a 10% return on equity holding for six months. So if you like it, that's what you do. If you want more exciting stuff, you wouldn't do this, but I probably they're going to make the money on this one. <laughs> I would guess. Yeah, it looks all right. I mean, if they sold them yesterday, that would be about a 10% sale, <laughs> almost exactly. Uh, now it's about a, close to 7%, but still not bad for this time frame. So if you think the stock's going to hang out here, I mean, it has been moving of late, so maybe it's not going to hang out. But this guy, obviously, not too worried about that and taking his 7 or so percent. And we'll see. We'll keep an eye on this one. Maybe we'll come back to it later this year, early next year, and see how he fared here in his little line in the sand. Mr. Rocklops, are you getting, I think the I think the eye of Sauron must like you, because whenever you're on, it seems to find line in the sand puts for you, sir. So <laughs> let's see let's see what else it has queued up for us here today. We're going out now to Oracle. Haven't talked about them in a while. You all know Oracle, ticker symbol O-R-C-L, trading right now about 82 bucks even, off about two and a half bucks, nearly 3% on the day. And let's see, what kind of year has it been here for Oracle? A pretty decent one, all things considered. A year ago, it was trading about 54 bucks, so a wee bit shy of where it is right now. And it kind of slowly trended by October, was trading 61, so I had rallied a bit. Then it gave it up again down to 55 bucks, then it rallied up to 65 in December, and then kind of gave it up again. Then it started having some more aggressive fits and starts, got up to about 72 in March, then sold off again to 66. Then it gapped up to 79 in April, went back down to about 74, back up to 80 and back down. It's done this a number of times now. We're on the latest iteration of that. It gapped up to about 84.61. That was on the day everybody loved last year, June 8th. And now it's come off a little bit since then, off a couple of bucks from that high. So we're on the latest kind of fit and start out here in Oracle, which is an interesting chart for a a large multinational software corporation here. Let's see what our eye of Sauron found out here. Listen, it's going a little bit closer to home this time, not going out to Jan, going out to June. The June 85 puts. That's an interesting strike because those are now in the money. Going up for a comparatively rich $3.15, 4,704 times. This is over there. On the Philly, they were 310 bid on the Philly when these went up. They're 310 at 325, and they went up when the stock was actually a wee bit higher, 8302. So, about a buck and change north of where it is right now. Let's see what kind of vol they got here. They got about almost a 41, about a 40 and a half vol out here. So, Mr. Rock Lobster, this is your old friend, Line the Sand. They're playing a little bit closer to the fire here, both from an expiration perspective. And from a strike perspective, we don't see a lot of in the money line in the sand. If it's in the money at that point, is it no longer a line in the sand because the line has been crossed? Is it now maybe, I don't know, a death trap? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I This is an odd one, I have to admit. Um, I guess, I don't, yeah, it's definitely not line in the sand. It is, what do we call this one? I don't know what we call this one. Um I, I actually my my brain actually can't handle uh i'm, I'm okay this, with uh, death trap i kind of like it the death trap puts what do you think you know the line has been crossed you've gone too far <laughs> it, it, i mean it just uh i what is this just like a just grand all like i can't buy the stocks so i'm just gonna whack out some puts and i mean to me this is just you're you're long the stock and you're happy with it so I would guess if Larry Ellison wanted an island, he would sell some more out-of-the-money puts, and he'd sell like 100,000 of them or something like that. If you want to 
by another small Hawaiian island uh, to uh, continue his uh, super awesome lifestyle. But this one is this is a bit of a head scratcher for me uh, as far as you know, um, like the the purpose of it. <laughs> so somebody just wants to sell some puts. Hey, uh, go knock yourself out. But I, I think they sold the puts for three dollars and fifteen cents. The stock was. Um, uh, what is it, 80, 81.95 ish, where it was printing at the time? Oh, it was $83 was the reference stock. A little bit of juice. They just they just want to be long going into next week. What you know, what 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 can you say? They want to be a little long. They apparently want to be a little long. Perhaps, dare I say it, they have fallen into the death trap for the puts. <laughs> I think that name might stick. It just sounds fun. All right, let's see if our last one is fun. We're gonna set the wayback machine dial, Mr. Rock Lobster. So put on your bell bottoms. And uh, maybe perhaps your old tweed blazer to have a nice mix-matched outfit over there as we go back all the way to April 26th here in everyone's favorite name, Range Resources Corporation, ticker symbol RRC. At the time, listeners, we profiled a trade that you would think would work out pretty well given the nature of the upside we've seen in the market of late, but has proven to be very challenging. It's the upside call buy-in. In particular, this was 8,513 of the RRC May 10 calls going up for nearly 40 cents, 39.7 cents here. Obviously, maybe some splits going on there. Uh, going up, these were pre-earnings. So they had earnings that day. Uh, the stock was nine and a quarter when they put it up. It was a 68 and a half vol, if you are curious, and I know you all are. And they had earnings that day after the bell. More of them followed on after our show. A total of nearly 18,000 hit the tape. And this is one that looked like, looked like a kind of, this is another head scratcher, Mr. Rock. We've had a lot of these of late because this one seems like it worked out pretty well. Uh, the stock took off not that long after, after the trade. And obviously, expiration was a few weeks later in may it hit its high of that period of the lifespan of this option it hit 1431 on may 17th that was obviously a few sessions before expiration so these calls were more than four dollars to the good (laughs) right before expiration he bought them for less than 40 cents and the stock closed at 1408 so he still had a nice four dollar winner if not you know this is this is a pretty good one and and interestingly enough, I said a lot went up. So a total of 18,000 went up. Some of those got paired off in the subsequent session. So some folks, not this maybe 8,500 lot guy, but some folks who came in afterwards took them and got the heck out of Dodge. They took their money and ran. They said, hey, these things are trading a couple of bucks, three, four bucks all the way up to there. Uh, let's get the heck out of Dodge. Let's get while the getting is good. So those folks, I understand. But there were still... Almost the exact amount of this trade open on this strike at expiration. They were a little bit shy of 9,000, about 8,700 or so open. Again, almost exactly the size of this print that we profiled here. So someone came in, and there could have been some overriding going on. It is weird that the OI lines up exactly with what we profiled there and that it was still open yet again. So the stock, just to refresh your memory, listeners, they bought these calls about 40 cents when the stock was... 921 stock gaps up to $14 closes at 1408 and a good portion of these calls that went up that day are still open are they the same guys calls who knows but it is an interesting coinky dink Mr. Rock Lobster another head scratcher big winner big winner winner chicken dinner if you listen to the show you know you take those off and yet for whatever reason once again, Mr. Rock Lobster, someone left. I guess he he really wanted that stock at ten dollars, sir, or ten forty in this case. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's you buy calls for thirty nine cents. I, you know, I, you know, when you were a market maker, you had a lot of stock options you exercise, right? You bought calls, and then they all want money, and you know, because everything's paired off, blah blah blah. But if you buy them at thir- if you know, you spend. 40 cents for a bit, you know, 10,000 options essentially. And they go to $4. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you think you just sell them or are you, what are you turning into a long-term capital gain? I, I don't, I don't, I don't see what the advantage of not closing them on 
closing the myths, but maybe I'm maybe Tucson has some sort of magical uh, RIA tax advantage deal for not closing the calls. But I, it's a little bit of head scratch to me when you're when you when you rocked them all the way to four bucks. You know, bit of a head scratch. You know, it also can be head scratchers sometimes, but fun ones. It's your mail. So let's get to it. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the Mail Block. All right, everybody, let's get to it. It is Mail Block Thursday. And you know, you folks out there on the Plus and Pro side, we love you. You're our favorite children of all. Because you get bumped to the top of the list for questions, just like our good friend here, Mr. Luigi. He first chimed in on our Options Oddities show, and we discussed some trades he had there. He had some follow-ups, and he just added some more listening live. Now, let's see here. Let's go back to that, and we'll tie it all together. He said, just wanted to say thank you for your thoughts on my AMC position. Yeah, he had some AMC trades he was doing last week. Being that I am still a working stiff, I had to walk away from the live show just as you were going to talk about it. I did catch it on the live stream a little bit, or excuse me, on Mixler. You can also listen to the podcast. The podcast is nice and edited. Remember, if you listen to some of the show reels that are up there on Mixler, those are kind of just the raw live streams. So they're not balanced. The music could be weird. The podcast is nice and balanced and edited for your listening pleasure. Uh, He says, the good news that the butterfly I spoke of is short dated. Okay, that's right. He had some crazy long term trades he was doing 79 days in amc and i kept saying why are you doing covered calls and butterflies out 79 days and he said the butterfly actually isn't it was short dated it has only seven days left however the 79 day covered call is way out there yes as i recall he had bought the stock around 14 and then sold a covered call for like 35 39 dollars so he was looking pretty good on that <laughs> even though it is pretty far out there I went out that far due to the ability to get as close to a credit or small debit for the role versus the cost to buy back the call. My intention was to buy the position back early if given a chance. I figured I would sit on the $32 premium for a little bit. <laughs> Am I thinking of this correctly? With the $33 call plus the $32, uh, my break even is around $65 on the stock. I think you said you bought the stock at $14. I'm a little confused there. Uh, let's see, with a minimum profit of 19, if it gets pulled away, so, oh, I own the shares at 14. Uh, yeah, well, that part is true. Yes, you, you bought the stock at 14. So you sell the covered call for more than 14. You you literally cannot lose. <laughs> I also threw a 30 count YOLO $3 put 79 days out for 45 cents around the same time as the butterfly. After I heard the company sold some shares and diluted the float, figured I paid for that position with the whole shebang. But am I watching the IB pretty closely? Thanks again for offering this format. You guys are all great. Oh, looking forward to the next level for me and us. Well, we're still rolling out those first plus and pro, but there's more, all sorts of fun stuff to come, more nuances, more fun bells and whistles for all of our members. It looks like he chimed in with more today. He says, I just wanted to say I'm still holding steady on my AMC covered call. I have a 36 day, 80, 95 long spread on in addition. Well, let's see where. AMC is hanging out right now. Listen, all you folks love slinging your AMC. It's a little bit shy of 44 right now. 80.95. Interesting. I have done well with the short side. I would like to roll to the other side of 80 and further out with it. Should I do like Brian always says, lay down until the urge goes away? Yeah, I like that saying of his. Bought the 80.95 for $2. like to turn it into a credit spread. All right. There's a lot to unpack here. Let's go around the horn. Maybe we'll start with Uncle Mike, sir. I know you don't trade a lot of AMC, even though I think you had some naked calls on it, you said. So maybe you have more to add in here than, than, than you might assume. But A, what are your thoughts on the notion of doing covered calls and or butterflies 79 days out and farther? And, and then B, if you buy a cheap stock and then you sell a covered call for roughly two and a half X what you bought the stock for, I guess you're a happy camper. You don't really need to do anything else with that. And then he also wants to know, he has a 36-day, 80-95 put spread, I'm sorry, long call spread in AMC that he paid two bucks for, and stocks moved away from that now. What should he do with that, Uncle Mike? So a lot to unpack. A lot to unpack for sure. So let's start off with 79-day butterflies and covered calls. I think there's a place for them, but I think it's more for doing boring stuff like what I do in longer-term portfolios, uh, meaning that if you want to lock in the premium for a longer period of time, I'm all for that. So let's say, for example, uh, and I'm just 
using this as a random example on a covered call, let's say that you like XYZ stock and you want to sell covered calls on it month in, month out. And let's say you can get, uh, I'm just making up a number, 35 cents for the uh, front month covered call, whatever strike price you want to pick. And then if you go out three months, and let's say that you can get maybe um, 90 cents for the three months, then depending on what ratio you want to use, and I do spend a lot of time asking myself this question, is it worth it to try to uh, sell a covered call three months in a row and try and get the same premium? Or should I just lock in the larger premium? So let's say that the stock were to stay the exact same and with the stock staying the exact same, you get 35 cents a month, then you're going to be at a dollar five and after three months. Whereas if you just sell a three month covered call, then what's going to happen is you're going to get 90 cents. So your 15 cents is what your risk would be by going three months instead of one month. Now, what's the benefit of it? Well, let's say the stock tanks. Well, then you have the 90 cents locked in. Or let's say that volatility uh, goes down significantly and you're only able to get 20 cents the next month. Then you're better off going three months instead of one month time after time. So I think that in terms of a covered call going three months instead of one month uh, or one week or one day or whatever time frame you want to use, I think it's very important to look at that to say, okay, number one, do you feel that volatility is high right now? And if you do feel that vol is high, a lot of times I would go out to the three months because of the fact that if vol goes lower and I still want to be in a short premium position the following month, I have that locked in. And then the second thing is, is that if you're concerned with the stock moving away from you, uh, then I think you're better off going three months out. Uh, or if you feel that vol is low, then you think vol might be higher the next month, then I'd probably go a little bit more shorter term with it. So those are my thoughts on covered calls for three months. For butterflies for three months, I usually like doing butterflies one to two months out typically, uh, just because it gets to the point to where you almost have no position because uh, the deltas are just... Um, I mean, I suppose you could do them and they could work, but typically with, in, within my world and the aggressive strategy, I'm usually one to two months out with butterflies. Um, the purpose of doing a butterfly is because they don't cost that much money and I'm typically a bullish butterfly guy. Shocked, I know. Um, but if I'm doing a bullish butterfly, the purpose of doing it is because I don't want to pay a lot of money for them. And a lot of times a more shorter term butterfly uh, and the difference between a shorter term and a longer term isn't quite that much. So I'm typically more of a shorter term butterfly kind of guy. Um, and I forgot what the other two points you asked me about were because I got all wound up on these. Sorry. <laughs> you're a very wound up kind of guy. today. It's all time high day. I get it. I get it. Yeah, you're right. Long term butterflies. What does the Roth have to say? Isn't that say like like kissing your sister? Not a lot of not a lot of not a lot of value in those long term flies. Mister Rock Lobster, what are your thoughts on those kind of trades? Doing them longer term, and also he has this thirty six day eighty ninety five vertical in AMC that he paid two bucks for, and he wants to maybe roll it down and out below eighty. What do you think of that, sir? Like uh, I'm trying to like so he he bought a call vertical and. He, I was said, trying to figure out all the stuff he was doing. Yeah, he's doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, like he did a 79 day covered call, and then now, okay, now he, all right. So I would assume that is blown up and in the money. Um, I'm just looking at all this. Like he bought a $3, put 75 days out. Um, at the same time, Butterfly or the company sold some shares, and I, I figured, um, I, you know, just ball is so high in there, you know, which, and this is AMC because the stock was like 12 bucks, what, last week? Like two or days ago, probably. Last week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, and he threw a 30 put. Oh, I also threw a 30 put yellow put seven handies out for 45 cents. Uh, so I assume he bought that put. Uh, he paid $3 for that put. Um, uh, so. Here's my biggest thing with this, right? What is he trying to do? Like, so what I try to tell my students is 
what is your goal? <laughs> like, what are you trying to do with the position? Everybody wants to make money, but you have to have, I think, kind of clear goals. Like, they, he's got a, a buy right that looks like it's going to pay, and it looks like he protected the buy right with a put. Um, and he had some, but like, upside call spread. Like, yeah, like, um, you know, and it done well on the short side. Yeah, like this is classic. Okay, I have a call spread. I've done well on the short side, but the long side is getting killed. But net, are you up any money, right? So I would, you know, in in a case like that, um, I would look at it like this. If you have a covered call, that's going to generate some dollars for you. If they take away the covered call, it'll be X dollars, right? How much money are you going to actually make? Well, that cover the cost on your long call spread, which is kind of YOLO-y at this point because it's an 80-95 call spread. So I wouldn't mess around taking the short call off. Uh, it just, again, depends. If it gets down to like 20 cents or something like that, you could always take off the short call. Um, but I don't know if you want to keep buying call spreads all the way down, you know, because that one's losing money and then you want to buy another one, another one, another one, and then all of a sudden, the money you've made on your cover calls is going to go away. So they got to be careful on how they want to manage this thing. Um, or they could end up just taking what was a winning trade and creating a losing trade out of it, which has not been the first time in the history of trading options that that's happened. No, it has not. But it, take solace, Luigi. You're sitting on a covered call that is multiples of the price of your stock. So that's, that's, that should put a smile on your face. At the very least. Yeah, you went out pretty far, but hey, you know, that could end up being a good thing because we could see AMC drop in. If you did a weekly call, you could maybe not get that much juice because it could all come crashing back down next week. So you go out a few months, you're at least locking in the level there. So there you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a super keen on rolling that. You say you want to roll it into a credit spread. I'm not sure. What Do you want to flip it completely? You want to sell the covered call or sell the uh, call spread now? I'm a little confused there with the Rock Lobster as well. So maybe give us more details on that. We can always touch on it tomorrow on Options Oddities. For you and all the other members out there, you guys, you got your cool new, I think it's been sent out to you already, cool new way to reach out to us. Exclusive to the members there. So you can get your questions bumped to the top of the list. Just like Mr. Luigi there. Unfortunately, that music means they're up against it here for this show. So we're going to do a combo of around the block as well as kind of a, a plug block as well. Let's start with the uncle list of Mike's. Mr. Uncle Mike Tussauds, sir. What are you watching for the rest of this week into the weekend? A and B, if folks want to reach out to you to discuss your blog or anything else, where should they go? What should they do? Well, definitely watching the all-time highs today in the S&P 500 to see uh, if we can hold those and continue to stay above them watching that. Watching the 10-year, uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, interested to see where we're at, where we continue to go with that. Uh, I don't think we're going to go much higher, but we will see, of course. Uh, and then if you are interested in working with a financial advisor who is not afraid of the option product, uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusaw or go to my website, stcharleswealth.com. All right, Mr. Rock Lobster, if folks want to maybe come to the land of the pit where you can be a special guest star on your own webinars, uh, what can they look forward to? Yeah, <laughs> come on. Kind of optionpit.com, look at our membership page. All kinds of ways to get your option pit, uh, your option learning on. Uh, trying to get you to pay for your education with good option trades, which a lot of our students do. Um, and come on over to optionpit.com and get that, get that going. Get that going. Get that going. And there's more going. If you're listening live, stay tuned. We'll be back in exactly half an hour to talk a little bit of small cap ball and energy a bunch of commodities are just on the rampage these days we'll break it all down and a lot more coming up on twifle you get some fun stuff pumped into the live chat in between back again tomorrow with volatility views then the old options oddities mr rock lobster i heard a rumor that you are intending to make a return appearance on your old favorite program options oddities tomorrow is that the case sir it's possible it's definitely po i just want to make sure you're doing it right you know, I want to make sure you remember how to do it. You want to make keep me in line. I understand. I understand. Well, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see if the Rock Lobster comes to keep me in line tomorrow on Options Oddities. That's for all of our pro friends out there. And, of course, back again on Monday, another episode of the Option Block. 
You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.